escape from Tolson Prison after serving 15 years of his sentence. His name is Harry Crow, but he chooses to call himself 39013, his old prison number. The man is insane. There's no telling what he will do next. Which is no excuse for your repeated failures to capture this man. Everything is being done, Commissioner. The man is just not to be found. But he's got to be found. Every few days, another Granville interest destroyed. I want this man captured. If you have to tear down the city brick by brick. You're rapidly evening up the score against the man who sent you to prison, 39013. Five of the nine major Granville enterprises have been wiped out so far. The score is a long way from being evened yet. Doctor, when I get through with Horace Granville, he'll be entirely ruined. Read me the list of the Granville properties remaining. There's the Granville Amusement Center. It represents quite a lot of money. Amusement Center, eh? That's it. It'll be next. The Granville Amusement Company. Everybody. Hurry, 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 friends. It's the big attraction, and it's absolutely free. See the daredevils and their triple, death-defying, hair-raising, world-famous stunt. Introducing the three daredevils of the Red Circle. Number one is Carnet Awesome, ladies and gentlemen. By himself, my friends, and without assistance, he will support that 80-foot ladder during the death-defying routines of his brother, Daredevil. And number two, ladies and gentlemen, is Gene Townley, world champion, professional high diver, and all-around athlete. Thank you. Gene carries a flare. Now, that flare will be lighted when he reaches the top of that ladder. And third, but not least, ladies and gentlemen, that famous escape artist, Bert Noel. Strapped in a standard approved straitjacket and with his feet chained together, this young lad will be hoisted head downwards to the top, the very top, ladies and gentlemen, of that 80-foot ladder. The second that he starts up, ladies and gentlemen, that flare will be lighted at the top of the ladder. The flare burns for exactly two minutes. There he goes. your hat. Here I go. Dollar says you don't make the tank. If I don't, you're gonna look awfully funny back behind that soda fountain. Yeah? Gentlemen, is at 8.30 tonight. Come on back and see us. Bring your family. Tell your friends. And remember, the time is 8.30 tonight. Hello? The next show starts at 8.30. Allow 12 minutes before the flare is thrown into the diving tank. Yeah, the flare is always burning when it hits the tank. Get aboard the fuel boat at the harbor. My men on the pier will signal you when it's safe to approach. I want that diving tank emptied and refilled before the second show. OK, it's empty. Close the valve. I'll go and signal the boat. Pull in under the pier, and we'll pump this stuff up into the diving tank. Watch this. Curve your back a little more. Like this. You see, it's balanced first. And strength afterwards. How's that? Yes. Oh, kind of helped heavy. <laughs> I'll show you a lot of things, Sammy. You don't want to end up just another high diver like um, your brother. That's all right, but there's more to life than picking locks and getting out of straitjackets. 
Unless, of course, you want to land in a bug house at an early age. Don't forget, Sammy, it's brains that count. What do you want to be when you grow up, Sammy? Well, first I want to be as strong as you, Tiny. And then I want to be as fast as Bert. And then I want to have a lot of brains, like Jean. Atta boy, Sammy, you have the right idea. And now, little brother, soap and water and plenty behind the ears. Catch? Me catch. Yes, I'm ready. Get the police station. Chief Landon. This is 39013. Place this call. I'm destroying the Granville Amusement Center tonight. You've got exactly 10 minutes. Hello. Hello. Broadcasting station. Calling all cars. Calling all cars in the neighborhood of Granville Pier. <laughs> Since we can't get down the ladder. We both have to slide. Get going. Thanks, pal. Thanks, come on, boy. Forget it. Where's Sammy? Come on. <laughs> Doctor says that in a couple of days you'll be as good as new. Sure I will, Jean. I feel good. And remember, when you grow up, you're going to be as strong as Tiny and as fast as Bert. Remember? Yeah. I'm going to have a lot of brains like you, Jean. What is it? It hurts. Doctor. I sympathize with you for your loss and understand your motives in wishing to work for Mr. Granville. But unfortunately, we're not hiring any new men. Even if we were, they'd have to be experienced in detective work. But we can do a lot of things. Yeah. All we want is a chance to get on the trail of 39013. I'm sorry, boys. But this present case is more of an intellectual job than a physical one. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm very busy. This way out, boys. That's all very well, Mr. Dixon. We still like to see Mr. Granville. Hey, you mugs. You're wasting Mr. Dixon's valuable time. Come on, Tuffy.
Why, it's the daredevils. They saved my life at the pier. How's the youngster? Sammy's not with us. He... Oh, I'm so sorry. If there's anything I could do... Thank you, just the same, miss. We had planned on seeing Mr. Granville, but apparently he's a very difficult man to get to. Then there is something I can do. You shall see him at once. You mean you can arrange it? Certainly I can. I'm his granddaughter. Come on. This is as far as we go. Grandfather's doctor and private nurse, and sometimes Mr. Stanley, a secretary, are the only ones who ever go beyond that glass door. Well, why is that? Hello, Jeff. Let me speak to Grandfather. Jeff's the nurse. You see, Grandfather had a mysterious stroke while on a trip. He's better now, but until he's completely recovered, he keeps everything sterilized and never leaves this part of the house. Well, how's he manage his affairs? You'll see. Hello, Gramps. I've got to see you a moment. It's terribly important. All right. I'll be right out. Blanche, who are these men? I told you about them, Gramps. These are the men who saved my life at the pier. Oh, yes, yes. And for that, they have earned an old man's gratitude. My granddaughter is very precious to me. And for saving her life, you only have to name your own reward. Uh, we didn't come here to get a reward, sir. Uh, we didn't come here to get a reward, sir. Because of 39013, my little brother lost his life. We've sworn to do everything we can to find him. We thought that by coming here and cooperating with you, success would come a lot sooner. Your wish is most certainly granted. Yes? Say, I'm putting three new men on. They'll report to you right away. See that they're given comfortable quarters so that they may work from here as a base. But we... Now, if that meets with your satisfaction, you can go and see Mr. Dixon at once, and he'll take care of everything. Thank you, sir. And thank you, Miss Granville. It's little enough. Thanks, Gramps. Blanche, dear. You remain. I want to talk to you. I'll see you later. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning, Miss Granville. How's the patient? Can't complain, Doctor. Thank you. There's considerable excitement going round over 39013's threat to destroy the Channel Tunnel. This paper says that public fear will ruin your venture, even if 39013 fails. Well, this is one time that fiend will fail. There's nothing he can do to harm the tunnel. Every precaution has been taken. But the public doesn't realize that. Well, something must be done to inspire public confidence. Otherwise, the tunnel will not open. Blanche, dear. Yes, Grandfather. Would it be asking you too much to be the first to ride through the tunnel? Of course, if you're afraid, I... Oh, I'm not afraid, Gramps. I'll be there. Oh, that's the spirit, Blanche. I knew you would. I'm ready for my treatment, Doctor. Dr. Malcolm? Yes? May I speak to you a moment, please? Well, 39013, you've got your wish. The hateful granddaughter will attend the opening of the famous Channel Tunnel. Tell Dr. Malcolm to meet me here. Some more reading matter for you, my friend. Come here. I hope you're satisfied, Crowell. I'm going mad. Mad? You're going mad. You wait till you had 15 long years of it. One of these days, Crowell. You'll make a slip during your fiendishly clever impersonation of me. Without thinking, you'll speak in your own natural voice and be discovered. You build no hopes on that score. 
When I wear this mask, I am yourself. I make a point never to speak in my own natural voice until this wig and mask are off. This sells a duplicate of the one you sent me to. How'd you like it? You never thought of me, did you? Well, I thought of you plenty, waiting for the day when my chance would come. Well, it came. I escaped from prison. You took that trip. It was almost too easy. The papers played up the gag that you'd had a stroke. But I was the sick man they brought back to this house. <laughs> your very own home. Why, even your granddaughter failed to see the change. How you can be so cruel and yet live is beyond me. You'd best pray that I continue to live, Granville. If anything happened to me, so that I fail to come down here and refill this reservoir, the water would drip entirely away. And when the reservoir became lighter, and these lethal gas capsules would break upon the floor. The gas would kill you in a very short time, Mr. Granville. So you see, your life depends on nothing happening to me. I'll get it. Hello? I'm sending you with Sheffield down to the Channel Tunnel tonight. I want you to keep your eyes open and patrol it thoroughly from now until the ceremony takes place tomorrow. Beat Sheffield at the garage in five minutes. Okay, we'll get right down there. Get ready. We're leaving for the tunnel. What do you make of it? Some kind of a warning, but what's this red circle stand for? The red circle's our own symbol. That's right. Whoever wrote it must be looking out for us. We'll get down to the garage and meet Sheffield. Stay here, Tuffy. to bring you a word picture of the opening of the six million dollar channel tunnel connecting sunny santa alicia island to the mainland the air is tense with excitement ladies and gentlemen as the tunnel is being opened in direct defiance of threats that it will be destroyed crowds of people are being kept back as a safeguard against any eventuality the public knows that the elusive malevolent 39013 has never yet failed to carry out a threat but in contrast to the ominous circumstances surrounding this event it's a beautiful day I'm going to try to give you a picture of the setting. From the promenade adjoining the tunnel's main entrance, I can see across the channel to Santa Alicia Island. Seems an incredible distance for men to tunnel, following a curving straight up rock below the ocean's bottom. Off to the left is the Granville oil well, actually standing out in the water, pumping oil up from underneath the sea. I see Chief of Police Landon, ladies and gentlemen. I'll try to get him to answer a few questions for us. Pardon me, Chief Landon, but do you believe this 39013 has any chance of carrying out his threat to destroy the tunnel? I think it is the idle boast of a madman. Thank you very much, Chief Landon. Chief Landon's right. Your threat to destroy my tunnel is the idle boast of a madman. There's no way you can do it. You're drilling an oil well off the coast, very near to where the tunnel runs beneath the passage. Yeah, it was through that well that the rock strata was discovered that made the Channel Tunnel possible. Mm -hmm. I'll take a look at this. My men in control of well number one has been drilling an offset for the past three weeks.
Miss Blanche Granville has just arrived, ladies and gentlemen, with a full police escort. Blanche! What, you sent her there? Why, you... My little surprise. She went gladly on your behalf. Shell. Cut her off until they start into the tunnel. Okay, shut her off. What's the matter? I just heard a strange noise. It seemed to come from overhead. Something suspicious? I don't know. Stop suddenly. Well, I guess it couldn't have mounted to much. I'm rounding up all the men. You better get out of here now. The ceremony's due to start. Yes, sir. that phone if I were you. You're not me. Hello, hello. This phone is dead. Well, wait a minute. What's your hurry? Look, I was supposed to take orders from you, but from now on, I'm doing my own thinking. There's something wrong back in that tunnel, and I'm going to find out what it is. Call the guards! This man is going to try and wreck the tunnel! Hey, what's the idea?
going to time perfectly. some sort of drilling pit. Must be from one of those oil wells. I'm getting out there. You think that's strong enough to hold it? It'll hold. We'll report it.
we turned them over to Chief Landon for questioning. They talked, but they didn't seem to know for whom they were working. How badly is the tunnel damaged? The engineers report that the break can be fixed within a week. Ah, oh, good, good. You must be congratulated on your fast thinking. Perhaps this will be a lesson to 39013, not to underestimate the abilities of those who are resisting him. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must go. Come into my office. I want to talk to you. Get rid of those three. But how? That's up to you. But make it look like an accident. I don't want an investigation about this place. Tell me the Channel Tunnel's been destroyed. No, my friend. I'll keep that news for some future date. What has happened, then? Very little, thanks to three meddlers. They are three circus performers who feel I'm responsible for the death of a youngster. The brother of one of them. Masquerading as you, Granville, I was forced to pretend maudlin sympathy and to hire them when they came begging for a chance to capture 39013. Yeah. Rather amusing hiring men to track oneself to Earth. However, those three daredevils, as they call themselves, proved a trifle annoying. I'll get rid of them this afternoon. And be careful how you go about it. Don't worry. There won't be any slip up. Right. Dixon, my briefcase has just been stolen out of my car. Was there anything of importance in it? Yes, there was. A complete report of the equipment of the Granville Chemical Laboratories. Been just made up of the War Department. Mr. Granville had offered to turn the plant over to the government for the manufacture of chemicals to be used by the Army and Navy. Would those plans be of any use to 39013? Unquestionably. In fact, it would be easy for anyone who had them to destroy the entire plant. Have you any idea who stole your case? No. 39013 always warns ahead when he means business. But he might be changing his tactics. You boys get out there and see if everything's okay. Right. Mysterious friend? No, just a note from Dixon to have the oil changed. Hey, what did that note say? It was a red circle message, wasn't it? Yeah, read it yourself. I was afraid we were being watched back there at the garage. Don't go. It's a trap. If it is a trap, 39013 must be behind it. Yeah, that's what I figured. Well, we'll be going into this thing with our eyes open. Right. Did Dixon send you? Yes, that's right. I was told to watch out for you. The superintendent wants to see you right away. 
You can park right in here. He's down this way. Superintendent, right down that line of chemical tanks. Thanks a lot. the superintendent right down that line of chemical tanks. Thanks a lot.
Diego Ferran. Turn it on. Shortly after I got out of the tank, the police arrived. We gave them a description of the men who got away and left them guarding the place. I don't think anything will happen up there for a while. There's a couple of things I want to ask you. You boys have done pretty well so far. What do you think of the case you're on? Well, it's occurred to me that 39013 has an uncanny knowledge of everything that happens in this household. What do you mean? Well, simply this. Isn't it possible that some member of this household might be a spy? Yeah, I thought of that. But except for you three, there isn't a soul in the house who hasn't been here for years. Well, how about Stanley? How long has he been with Granville? About 20 hey. years. Who is it, old fellow? Probably just a mouse. Shame on you, Tuffy, growling at mice. That dog belonging to those circus boys nearly gave me away a few moments ago. Now oh, he's dangerous. Get rid of him. All right. Think I wouldn't be here in time? Why, we got a full minute left. You needn't worry. I'll always be here in time to fill this. Of course, if anything happens to detain me, your prison sentence will be abruptly terminated. brought me here, you said you were going to make me experience all the tortures of mine that you went through in prison. Surely you were not in constant fear of death? I'm seeing to it that the torments which I suffered during 15 years are experienced by you in a much shorter time. Got 
Tuffy, move over. Is trying to catch them, I guess we'd better get back. Here, Tubby. Come on, Tubby. Atta boy. <laughs> Come on, Tubby. anything to him? No. No, of course not. The dog's just vicious. Oh, no, he's not. He wouldn't harm anyone without good reason. I tell you, I've never done anything to him. You didn't hire those men to do away with him, did you? I don't know what you're talking about. I refuse to stand for any more of these insults. He must have done something to Tuffy. That man will bear watching. Stanley's usefulness is over. I'm afraid he's due for a change. Why, what happened? Ah, oh, he's gotten himself under suspicion. Once they start questioning him, I'm afraid he'll crack. In that case, he better just quietly disappear. No, I got a better plan than that. See that the black sedan's in the garage tonight. What do you think? So you're the one. Yeah. With those three dead devils in the dark. I had to do something. They suspect me. I understand. But you're sure you're not the one that's been handing out those other warnings? Oh, I swear it. Then this note would have done you no good. The Red Circle, whoever he is, would have warned those circus fellas to disregard it. But what am I to do? Well, if you were to take a little business trip, it wouldn't arouse suspicion, would it? That might do it. Then as soon as I get rid of the dead devils, you could come back. Take the black sedan. All right. I'll let you know where I am.
morning, Doctor. Good morning. Ah, food! Good morning. Put it right here, Snowflake. Morning, Snowflake. What you will find in the garage is not suicide. Garage? I wonder what that means. I don't know, but we're going to find out. Stanley. Carbon monoxide. Sure looks like suicide. The card said it's not suicide. Fine, Dixon. Tell him to call the coroner. Y yes, sir. I'll shut the motor off. <coughs> Waste. Footprints. Somebody's been on top of this car. Look, there's some of this waste up there in that spring. Stanley was standing on top of this car, using this waste to stop something from coming out of that sprinkler. It couldn't have been water because everything around here is dry. Somebody close the door. Try the other doors. I'll turn on the car lights. Suicide. Sure looks like suicide. The card said it's not suicide. Fine, Dixon. Tell him to call the coroner. Y yes, sir. <coughs> I'll shut the motor off. <coughs> Waste. Footprints. Somebody's been on top of this car. There's some of this waste up there in that spring. Stanley was standing on top of this car, using this waste to stop something from coming out of that sprinkler. Couldn't have been water because everything around here is dry. Somebody close the door. Try the other doors. I'll turn on the car lights. We gotta 
get those doors open. Murph, give us a hand. Clear. First thing I knew, I didn't know anything. Hey, fellas. I traced the fake sprinkler pipe. It comes in through the back of this tool house. Let's take a look. You see, the pipe comes down through here. Lethal gas, all right. Look, a footprint in the plaster that fell out of that wheelbarrow. Must have stepped on a hot iron. Channel burned right across the heel. That should lead to something. Hmm. Maker's nameplate has been pried off. I'll have my men check on all the chemical plants. We should locate where this gas was made within the next day or two. Hey, Bert, give me a hand. No one connected with the house made that footprint with a burned heel. The shoe was of the workman type. Oh, I told Snowflake we'd eat in him. If we could trace where that tank came from, we might get a lead on who planted it. Yeah, it might take two or three days for Dixon's men to find out. the Tri-City gas plant. A mysterious helper, the Red Circle. Do you think it's on the level? I don't know, but we'll soon find out. Come on. And the three daredevils had a hunch the tank came from the Tri-City gas plant. What made them think of the gas plant? They wouldn't say, but I sent them over to make a thorough investigation. All right, Dixon. Let me know what happens. this, Davis. Dixon's just sent three men down to investigate the gas plant. Hold off on your plans till after they leave. Huh? Yes. If you get a chance to dispose of them at the same time, do it. Okay, Chief. I'll take care of it. We've been doing a lot of experimenting with our byproducts lately. It looks like it might be one of ours. What do you think, Al? Well, I don't know. Might have been taken from the storeroom at night. What about your assistants? No, they're above suspicion. It must have been someone connected with the plant. Unquestionably, that I'll have to investigate. Uh, by the way, while we're here, Mr. Peck, we'd appreciate seeing the plant. Well, I'd be glad to show you through. I'll see that that's locked up in the storeroom. We'll go out here. Tell us, Mr. Peck, what is the most vulnerable part of your plant? The key unit. Well, of course, that's the boiler room. It's in that building over there. I'd be very glad to show it to you. Uh, we'd like to see All it. All right.
You'll find these boilers the most modern available. Uh, what would happen if one of the boilers blew up? Well, that would be disastrous, but of course that can't happen. I'll show you. This thermostat controls the fire and also rings a warning bell. That's just in case the pressure gets too high. Up there, we have an emergency safety bell. Would you care to see that? If you don't mind. All right. This lever opens a relief valve. Of course, that's just in case the other two fail. Then there's practically no possibility of an accident. No, we've taken all the precautions. You know, safety is a byword with us. We better be going now. Thanks for your courtesy, Mr. Peck. Not at all. I'll check on that gas tank. Find out anything, I'll give you a phone call. I'll appreciate that. All right. You see, we're pretty well protected. Get the boys and bring them down to the boiler room. with a burned heel. There he goes. Headed for the boiler room. Hey, where's Johnson? He's got a little headache, and I'm relieving him. Oh. Hey, Joe, cut the wires to the warning bell. Mac, fix that safety valve so it can't open. Ted, open that thermostat and break the top contact. What's going on here? Okay, boiler room, what is it? Hello. Hello. They were trying to wreck the plant. What's the idea? Uh, we were cleaning up here when these mugs jumped us. Why, these three men are Mr. Granville's private detectives. That's right. Yeah, how do you know? Well, they had a letter and they... Yeah, I'm telling you, they're phonies. They were here to wreck the boilers. How about it? Why, it's ridiculous. Call Mr. Granville. He'll settle it. That's just what we'll do. I'll call him, Mr. Peck. What's the number? Harvard, 6093. Harvard, 6093. I'm calling for Mr. Peck. Put me through to Mr. Granville. Mr. Granville, this is Davis. Mr. Peck asked me to call you. There are three suspicious characters here who claim to be your private detectives. Yes, they say you sent them over to inspect the plant. Yes, Mr. Granville. We'll take care of them. Well, what did he say? He said he never heard of them. You're lying. Let me talk to him. This is no time for bluffing. Time up, men. See if they don't get away. Davis, you better call the police. I'll take care of it. Hey, wait a minute. Come on. That'll hold them. Just too smart for you, wasn't I? You better start saying your prayers, because in a few minutes, the whole work's gonna go up. And you're gonna go up with them. Come on, get out of here. Hey, Mac. Stand guard here. We'll pick you up on our way out. How you doing, Bert? Boy, if I were only Houdini, this would be child's play. Yeah, but you're not Houdini. Maybe not, but... Hey! 
I'm going down to the gate to stand guard. Leave him off. I'll try and make the boiler roll.
right, Gene? Yeah, I'm all right. You wouldn't believe me, and they finally did it. They done what? Jammed up all the safety devices in order to blow up the boiler. But I told you to... I got there and opened the relief valve just in time. Well, now, that is nice work. Thanks. <laughs> I'll certainly see that Mr. Granville hears about this. <laughs> Only one more, Mr. Granville, and uh, Mr. Klein. Mr. Klein? From some charitable organization. Oh, yeah. Over here, please. Uh, we use this to talk with Mr. Granville. What can I do for you? Uh, Mr. Granville, I am one of the directors of the Crippled Children's Aid Foundation. Uh, you know, of course, the wonderful work we are doing. Oh, yes, yes, of course. We have operated at a loss during the past season. And even with the contributions received so far, we are in dire need of an additional $10,000 to see us through the coming season. Oh, a very worthy cause. I shall be glad to make up the deficit. Well, that's splendid of you, Mr. Granville. I'll send you a check tomorrow morning. Thank you, sir. That's all, Mr. Granville. Oh, you want to play, do you? All right, go get it. Here. Here, boy. Here, boy. My cane. Uh, I'll get it for you. Here, Tuffy, bring it in. Here you are, boy. Come on. Sorry, sir, he only wanted to play. Give me that. Just a moment. Perhaps we'd better take a look at this. That's no concern of yours. Give me that cane. Take it easy, mister. What is it? Sure looks complicated. A wiring diagram of some sort. Looks as though somebody wanted to change the bed. Is this what you were worried about? I don't know a thing about it. Seems rather peculiar to me. What is it? No, we're getting somewhere. Come on, let's take this fellow into Dixon. Oh, but I... Okay, the plans are inside. You coming in with us? That's the way I understood it. All right, let's go. There it is. Go to it. District Attorney's a friend of mine, but I don't understand. I believe some of your money went to finance the development of the giant ray machine. That's true. I also recollect that this same District Attorney and yourself were responsible for sending me to the penitentiary. Little by little, I am settling the score. Tomorrow, your friend, the district attorney, will be mysteriously killed by the very machine your money helped build. But the ray will cure him, not kill him. No, no, my friend. My experts have discovered how to reverse the wiring and convert the curative gamma ray into the violent, destructive delta ray. And at this very moment, they are working on it. Give me those plugs.
Well, that takes care of the relay. The changeover's perfect. How you doing, Dan? All ready for the mic. This is just a spot for it. Bring that table over. That's good. I don't quite get the microphone angle. Well, you see, they'll test the machine before they use it. And it's got to be right. Yes, I gathered that. Now any high-pitched noise in this room will be picked up by the microphone under the table and throw the relay switch. We'll make a test now and see that everything is perfect. The lead stops the force of the ray. OK, Dan, throw the main switch. That's gamma ray, perfectly harmless. But watch, better step back a ways. I wish I could be here in the morning when they shoved the district attorney under this tube. Clean up this mess. We want to leave everything just as we found it. What are you doing here? I had an accident with the cane and those boys got on to me. When? This afternoon. Your watchdog Dixon locked me in here and sent one of his men to the clinic to investigate. That's bad. You stay here, and I'll send Jet to take you out through the getaway tunnel. Jeff. Klein is upstairs in the bedroom. Get him out of here. Right. It's the service phone. I better answer it. Black Clinic. Burton? That's right. This is Burton. They're here now. They've just finished. Everything's just as we found it. OK. We'll take care of them. Put up your hands. Get over here. Vault in the sub cellar. That ought to do. Come on, Dan. Gene's not with him. I can't figure it out. Should we follow him? No, we'd better go inside. Gene might be in trouble. Yeah. Something you wanted? We're closed for the night, you know. A friend of ours came in here a while ago with two other men. They just left, but he didn't. Well, uh... Oh, yes, they were working on the main switchboard in the subcellar. Maybe he's still there. I'll show you where it is. He's not here, but the main switchboard's in there. All right, reach. Back up.
Jean! You all right? Yes, I guess so. I feel as though I've been hit by a truck. What happened? I'll tell you about it later. Let's see if we can get out of here. Ah, oh, there's not a chance. Bolts support the door. Hey, Bert, is there a file on that gadget of yours? Yeah. Maybe we could file them off. Yeah, that ought to work. Take a lot of elbow grease. Give me a crack at it. Mr. Graves, this is the machine that's going to make you a well man. It's certainly an imposing looking affair. And highly efficient. It's going to be a great boon to the afflicted. I have no doubt of it. Now, if you'll just step over here. There's the old boy now, right on time. Black's giving him the once over. From your examination on Friday, I was sure you could take it. I just wanted to get a final check on the heart. And how do you find it? Very fit. We can proceed. Won't be long now. Just a moment. I want to make a test first to be sure that everything is in order. That's enough. All right, Miss Wilson. Okay. They made the test. Do your stuff. Black Clinic? No. No, I don't think so. Ten. Let's give it a try. That's got it. One more heave and she pops. All right, George, go ahead.
won't be long now. That's enough. All right, Miss Wilson. Okay, they made the test. Do your stuff. Black Clinic? No. No, I don't think so. to ten. Let's give it a try. That's got it. One more heave and she pops. All right, George, go ahead. Understand. It was a plot to get the district attorney. 39013's men changed the wiring last night. But I tested it just a few minutes ago. Yes, they figured on that, so they rigged up a relay. Tell me, after your test, wasn't there a loud, unusual sound in this room? Why, no. I don't remember. Yes, yes, there was a peculiar sound during that phone call from the outside. That's it. Somebody must have known the exact moment to call in. But no one can see into this room. How about that window? That must be it. There's a window in the building across the street directly in line. Come on. This is it. Going down the fire escape. There they are. up with a step on it. There's nothing we can do for him. No, I guess not. We better report back to Dixon. Matter, 
there, Snowflake? Having a little trouble, Snowflake? Uh, this dog of y'all won't let this mop go. Leave go, I say. I ain't got no time to play with you. Drop it, Tubby. <laughs> <laughs> And you found no clue which would identify those two men? Uh, no, sir. The car was a mass of flames. The fire destroyed everything. Tuffy, what is it? Say, this is a tip. What is it? It's another red circle note. It says the plans for changing over the gamma ray machine were furnished by Professor Selden. Selden? I've heard that name somewhere. Sure you have. He's made the paper several times. He's that crackpot inventor who's always making some great electrical discovery that never quite pans out. And Selden would know who ordered the plans. Yes, we'd better get over to his laboratory and talk to him right away. Now, wait a moment. How do you know this message is authentic? Who is this red circle, anyway? Well, we don't know, sir. But whoever he is, his messages have always proven to be correct. And he's helped us time and again. I've got no confidence in anonymous messages. Anyway, it won't do any harm to investigate. You boys run on down to the professor and question him. Yes, sir. Come on, Tuffy. Hey, what happened? That red circle again sent a message telling about Selden. The circle's right in this house, and when I find out who it is... What are you going to do about Selden? Order some of the men down to Selden's laboratory at once. This will be a good chance of settling finally with those three interfering daredevils. So tell them to take care of the professor, too. And he was running the risk of his talking. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Hello. Selden, you're about to have some visitors. Three young fellows who are meddling in my affairs. Can you arrange to hold them at your lab until my men arrive to take care of them? Certainly. I'm well equipped to handle the situation. I'll keep them here as long as you wish. Yeah. <laughs> Very well. That will be easy. I trust that you are properly uncomfortable and unhappy today. How long is this torture to continue? Oh, until your last holding or enterprise is smashed, my friend. And then? Well, and then, when there's nothing left for you to live for, I shall probably forget to come down here and fill that reservoir. The gas pellet will do the rest. You're mad. Mad? <laughs> I spent 15 years in a cell like this, long enough to make anybody well, if not completely mad, at least very annoyed. And don't forget, you put me there. Your own crime sent you there. anyone's around. Yeah, it sure looks deserted. They say he hides out here all by himself. Let's go in and look for him. So 
top of this here. Whoever dropped this box must be trying to attract our attention. Come on. out for a while and see what's really going on around here. Those three men get here yet? Yes, they arrived and have been well taken care of. What do you mean? I mean I have them safely locked in the old storeroom, awaiting your pleasure. Good. We can handle them. Why, what's the matter? You ought to know. There's no one in there. What? Why, that's impossible. Wait a minute. You aren't going anywhere till you explain what kind of a double cross you're trying to run on us. Why should I double cross you? There's been some mistake, I tell you. Yeah? Well, our boss doesn't like mistakes. And that puts you in a mighty tough spot. Come along with us. All right. If I'm on a spot, you're all with me. There's a time bomb planted in this room. And in just 30 seconds after I throw this switch, it will blow up. So. What are you going to do about it? I'm out of here. I close the contact. Help! Don't leave me. The bomb is behind that lower first panel. You can get it if you hurry.
why should I double-cross you? There's been some mistake, I tell you. Yeah? Well, our boss doesn't like mistakes. And that puts you in a mighty tough spot. Come along with us. All right. If I'm on a spot, you're all with me. There's a time bomb planted in this room. And in just 30 seconds after I throw this switch, it will blow up. So, what are you going to do about it? Scram out of here. I close the contact. Help! Don't leave me. The bomb is behind that lower first panel. You can get it if you hurry. Come on, let's scram. That blast will bring every cop in town. He's done for. It's too bad. There goes our chance of getting anything on 39013. Yes, I'm afraid so. Yes. Yes, yes, I understand. Well, they got away. But Selden died before he could spill anything. So we're safe on that. Will never be entirely secure until those red circle messages stop showing up. You have any idea who's sending them? I know it's someone in this house, and that's enough. Why? What do you mean? I mean the field of suspects is limited to those that I come in daily contact with. Therefore, by eliminating these people one at a time, I'm sure to get the right one. Who are you going to start with? Blanche. Blanche? You mean you'd murder her? Well, that's putting it rather crudely, Doctor. I'm merely arranging for her to have a fatal accident. You can't do that. And why not? It would stir up an awful row. The police would take this place apart. Besides, it's, it's too brutal. Now, don't forget that I'm still running this show. And if anything should happen to uncover me, it would be very bad for you, too. I'm now going to tell Mr. Granville about my plans for his granddaughter. He'll be interested, I'm sure. brought any papers today, I assume your schemes have gone wrong again. Tomorrow, my friend, I promise you some real headlines. I should be forced to admire your ingenuity. If you can find anything left to destroy that's worth a headline. Your granddaughter is worth a headline. You'd even murder her? No, not exactly. But she's going to undertake a very dangerous mission. Your radium mine is in difficulties, Mr. Granville. They have hit a water strata which threatens to flood the shaft. Impersonating you, I promised additional pumps. But the miners are still complaining, so I'm asking Blanche to take a trip down into the shaft just to convince the man that it is quite safe. Is she gone already? No, but I am sure she'll not hesitate a minute when her dear old grandfather asks her. Of course, everything will be all right, unless the power should be shut off. And that should happen. Well, 
the pumps wouldn't work. And they would be unable to raise the elevator. You murderer. And I'm expecting those three daredevils to go with her. It would be nice for them all to be together. down now if you wish miss granville the ship's just starting is there room for all of us not this trip i'm afraid well don't bother gene i won't stay down long all right we'll wait here for you okay just how dangerous is this jet oh it's safe enough as long as everything works we can't afford to have any breakdowns. If anything should happen to stop the pump and hoist at the same time, the workers at the lower levels would be trapped and drowned. Is there any other way to get out of the shaft? No, there used to be, but a cave-in stopped it. Well, as long as we've got to wait, we might as well sit down. Quite an outfit you have there. Yes, we have three eight-hour shifts working. The boys keep pretty busy. Yes, ma'am, and if it ever gets out of order, the boys will get their feet wet. Yes, I can see that. We're working down that headway, Miss Granville. Would you like to take a look? Yes, thank you. That means the cage is down. We're all set. Calling 29. Calling 29. 29. OK, go ahead. Go ahead. All right, Steve. Do your stuff. Lights down. Hey, the power's off. Check your switch. She's dead, all right. I'll call the powerhouse. Pump's off. Get on the lift. Hello? Hello? No juice. Isn't there anything we can do? Oh, they're buzzing to be brought up. They'll hear this emergency buzzer, but there's nothing we can do until they get that power turned on. What's happened? It may be the powerhouse or a line down in the mountains. I can't tell. The phone's dead. We'll drive over to the powerhouse and see what's wrong. And explain to them why they must hurry. Right. They wonder where they're going. We better keep an eye on them. Come on, boys. All set, Chief. All right, let her go. That does it. Come on.
happened to the power? Lines down back in the mountains. We had to shut off. But the mine's flooding. How long will it take you to fix it? Well, we phoned town for the repair crew, but it'll take quite a while for them to get here. Well, can't you go up and fix it? Well, I don't know. That isn't my job, and we can't leave the plant alone. But this is a matter of life and death. These other two boys can stay and help watch the plant. Okay, I'll try it. Ed, get your shoes and come with us. Tom, you stay here with these fellas. Looks like they're going to try to fix it themselves. So I hope Ward did a good job blocking that road. Something we can do. Our only hope is they get that power turned on quick. That looks like the repair crew. The block road will stop them. Well, that stops us. How much further? About five miles up this canyon. Hang on, we'll make it. some of the gang from the powerhouse. I think they're going to try to fix that break. Let them try. They can't get through. No, maybe not, but we can't take any chances. I think I'll go down and take over that powerhouse just to make sure. Suit yourself, but you're just wasting your time. Come on, fella. Get a rope. Stay where you are and take it easy. Those are the main switches? Yes, but you can't close them now. There are men working on the line. Isn't that too bad? Get over there. but it's okay now. Let's go. We gotta work fast. Those guys have been gone a long time. I think we better go down and see what's going on. What's happened, Sloan? They jumped us when I was throwing that switch. What switch? That one over there. Throws the juice into the main line so they can't fix it. You keep them covered.
We'll take over now. What's happened, Sloan? They jumped us when I was throwing that switch. What switch? That one over there. Throws the juice into the main line so they can't fix it. You keep them covered. Hurry up. We better clear out of here. That repair crew will be here any minute. Come on. Boy, sure thought I got you then. Almost. But I let go of the wire. Darked across and jolted me off. Something must be wrong at the powerhouse. Come on. Glad to see you're all right, Gene. Yeah. Say, what about Blanche? Let's get back to the mine and find out. Thanks, boys. Gene, what happened? Looks like more of 39013's work. They got one of the high lines. Yeah, we met some more of his friends. Very nice people. Well, thank goodness you're all safe. Well, how about you? Oh, I'm all right. Just a little wet. Let's go. Much obliged. You're entirely welcome. Thanks, old fellow. Oh, that's OK. finally decided to strike another blow at your favorite enterprise, the gas company. Your franchise requires an uninterrupted supply of natural gas from Kettledrum Valley. Well, at 4 o'clock this afternoon, the pipeline that supplies that gas will be blown up at Verduga Pass. But you can't do that. Think of the people. Think of the hospitals. You can't leave them without gas. <laughs> do you think that worries me? I'll come back soon and fill that jar for you. Perhaps I'll have some more news for you by then. had a message from a Mr. C.E. Brown at Somerdale, who has some important information for us. I want you boys to go up there at once and see him. OK, we're leaving right away. Oh, I'm hungry. There's no time to lose. Snowflake can fix you some sandwiches to eat on the way. Yes, sir. I sure can do that right away. We'll be ready to leave in 15 minutes. Fine. And I have arranged for those three daredevils to be sent on a wild goose chase so they can't interfere. Now, will you be so kind as to hand me your tray? I can promise you a much more interesting paper tomorrow. this way. Put it right down there.
Food ready, Snowflake? Yes, sir. There you is, sir. Thank you. Hey, look at this. A red circle drawn around part of an article. What does it say? Nothing that I can see. You better stop. Let's figure it out. Hey, look. The paper's full of pinholes. I get it. Somebody wrote out a message by pinpricking the letters. Will dynamite, pipeline, Verdugo Pass, 4 p.m. What's it all about? Must be another red circle note. But why do it like that? I don't know, but those messages have always meant something before. We better believe it this time. What are we going to do about it? Get over to Verdugo Pass, look things over. We'll stop and phone Dixon on the way. Hello. Oh, yes, Gene. We got a tip that they're going to dynamite the pipeline of Verdugo Pass this afternoon. We're going up there to investigate. I'll call you back later. There's been a leak in our plans again. Those boys have discovered about the Verdugo layout. What can we do about it? Don't worry. I'll fix him. They're on the way to the pass now. You're to get there first and be ready for them. Yes, sir. We'll take care of them. There it is. Hurry up with that packing. They've just turned on the pipeline road. Here it is. Let's get them. Something wrong here. That ought to fix it. He's cut the wire. Better go on up to the wells and get the word. Kit won't talk. Why, it's just a phony. Hey, what's the idea? How about those wires? I know about that. Hey, it's dynamite. I get it. We go after the fake bomb. Then after we're on this spot, they blast us from over there. Nice boys, you and your pals. Well, what about it? I'll make him talk. No, wait a minute, Tiny. If he doesn't want to talk, that's all right with us. Tie him up. 
I'm gonna splice that wire you just broke. If he doesn't like conversation, we'll just leave him here. Might just as well. The boys probably have a magneto box. We'll go up and investigate. Uh, maybe the magneto box and the dynamite are phony, too. We can find out easily enough. Just give the plunger a shove and see what happens. Come on. Hey, come back. I'll talk. I'll tell everything. I knew that'd get him. All right, now, spill it. Well, the chief phoned Zeke that you fellows were wise to the plan. How'd he find out? I don't know, but we got orders to plant this set up instead. Oh, he wanted to get rid of us permanently. Yeah, that's it. Then we were to go up to the wells at Kettledrome and set fire to the gassers. Zick and the boys are on their way up there now. One more thing. Who is the chief? I don't know. I believe him. We'll chuck him in the back of the car and drop him off at the Midvale station on our way through. Through to where? Kettledrum Valley. Come on. They're here already. We better hurry. Storage room would be the best spot. Lots of oil drums in there.
Break the window! We'll have to force the door! Asbestos suits! What am I? Boy, that was a close one. I'm glad we're out of there. Hey, they got out of it. We're sure lucky to get out of that one. Yeah. to see what they're up to. What's happening? Number four well is burning. We've got to close the shutoff valve. If fire gets the pipeline, the whole works will blow up. Bert, phone the flat and tell them to get the furnace going. Give me a hand with this. It's the emergency control. Hey, Tiny. Hello? Hello, Mr. Peck. This is Bert Knowles working for Granville. We had to close the main supply lines here at Kettle Drum. You've got to get the furnaces operating right away. What's that? Not for three hours. We'll get the furnaces going anyway. We'll be there as soon as we can make it. All the fuel tanks at the plant have been drained. They can't get any oil for three hours. Unless they get some right away, they won't be able to keep the furnaces going. There's a truck over by the storage tank. It ought to hold enough oil to keep the plant operating a few hours. We'll load it ourselves and run it into town. Come on. Are the tools still in the back of the car? Yeah. Well, let's go. We got a job down by the bridge. It'll take a while for this to fill up. You boys go ahead and get things set at the plant. Right. ought to do it.
glad that's over. Me too. It was a pretty narrow squeak. Let's drop these fellas off the sheriff's office. Yeah. We turned them over to the police, sir. But as usual, they did not know where their orders were coming from. Nor did they know where 39013 is hiding. What about the gas plant? It's vital that it continues operations. I delivered the one truck of fuel oil in time to keep the furnaces in operation. Before I left, other trucks were bringing in oil from all over the county. There's no danger of running short of fuel as long as these trucks keep making deliveries. Good, good. I'd like to compliment you boys on your thoughtfulness. I'm relying on you now more than ever. I'm ready to give you your treatment, Mr. Granville. Good, Doctor. Uh, Jeff and I will be down to your office as soon as I finish, to Dixon. That'll be fine, Doctor. Everyone in the house, with the exception of Mr. Granville, is meeting in my office in half an hour. I have a theory as to who this mysterious red circle is. I want to talk it over with you boys before the others get there. Right. You may come too, Miss Granville. Thank you. I'd like to. I've got to find out who this red circle is. He represents the only leak in an otherwise perfect setup. Hello, Marco. Get your pad and pencil. I've got some instructions to give. Okay, shoot. See to it that a truck loaded with gasoline instead of crude oil makes delivery at the city gas plant. Trucks are coming and going all day making delivery so that the gasoline will not be detected. Yeah, once it is emptied into the supply tanks and reaches the furnaces, it will do irreparable damage. Now, act on this at once, Marco. I got it. That's funny. You never mentioned this plan before. Marco knew it was a phony at the moment I said, act on this at once. You see, Malcolm, I've good reason to believe that the Red Circle listens in on some of these phone calls. Unless I miss my guess, the Daredevils will receive another Red Circle message within the hour. And when that message arrives, I want to account for everyone in this house. Now go out and keep your eyes open. All right. <clears throat> Another newspaper, Granville. Hey. Here's some news you might have missed. You'll never uh, get... save that speech until tomorrow. Then you'll have some more interesting news to get excited about.
That's the pantry ringing. Who'd be out there? Must be someone else in the house. Well, maybe it's stuck. Out of order. Let's go see. A red circle note. These wires tap into that push button there. Ingenious device. 39013, planning to substitute gasoline for fuel oil at the Tri-City gas plant. Good heavens, that would be disastrous. You boys get down there right away. Examine every truck. I'll contact the police. Yes, sir. The red circle fooled you. Fooled us all. We're still no wiser than we were. But you say the daredevils left for the gas plant. That's right. But at least we'll get rid of them. Blake and his men are at the plant with express orders to finish off the daredevils once and for all. Get going. Well, nothing but fuel oil's gone in so far. This truck's okay. There won't be another for 15 minutes.
nothing but fuel oil's gone in so far, this truck's okay. There won't be another for 15 minutes. Look out! Get him, Bert. the situation very well down at the gas plant. But we're still no closer to catching 39013. I think we are, Nixon. Those newspaper messages ought to give us some clue. Newspaper messages? Yes. Oh, I forgot to tell you. That's how we got the tip that 39013 was wrecking the gas lines. You see, someone marked out the message by pinpricking the letters in an old newspaper. Newspaper? Yes, the discarded papers from the house here. We wouldn't have noticed it, only whoever's been leaving those red circle notes marked the paper. But who in this house would send a warning like that? Well, that's what we have to find out. Evidently, it's someone who's afraid or unable to get to us any other way. So we're going through every old newspaper in the house. It all sounds like a pipe dream to me. There may be something to it. I know there is. And I have a hunch that at last we're catching up with 39013. I certainly hope so. Anyway, I'll tell Mr. Granville about it. Pack a load to the library and go to work. So the boys have a theory that the solution of 39013's whereabouts lies in this house. Oh, that's preposterous. Messages pricked on newspapers? How can anyone in this house have any connection with 39013? It does sound sort of silly. I'm beginning to feel I made a mistake in hiring those boys. They may even be sending those messages themselves to justify their remaining here. Oh, no, Mr. Granville. I don't think that. Well, watch them. Check up on them. Don't believe every word they say. Yes, sir. 
Yes. Granville must be marking those messages. Of course. You and Jeff get busy and collect all those newspapers before the daredevils get hold of them. I'll attend to Granville. You don't need to hide that paper, Granville. Your little trick's already been discovered. You mean you've been discovered? No, not quite. But I'm afraid they're getting very close to me. And I'm taking no chances. I'll adjust this so that it'll take about half an hour for this beam to tilt sufficiently to drop those bulbs. Of course, then it'll only be a very few moments before the room becomes filled with lethal gas. I'm sorry we still have to part company so soon. But you still have a little time to think over your misfortune. So you see, this is goodbye. Don't worry about the Granville interests. I can assure you they'll be well taken care of. Red circle note. Your papers are being stolen from the garage. <laughs> Somebody's been in here all right. <laughs> Doesn't look as though they got very many. No, but we better take the rest in with us. Someone was after them, all right, but I think we got most of them. Well, I'm glad of that. There are some more old papers upstairs. I'll get them for you. That's fine. Thanks. Here you are, toughy old boy. I'll take it. Here's something. Granville is imposter. Real Granville, prisoner in basement. It can't be. We've searched this whole house from top to bottom. Except one place, Granville's room. Come on! Wait a minute. What are you going to do? Listen to Granville's apartment and search the whole place. No, oh, we've got to be careful. If this is really straight, things are sure going to happen around here. Maybe we'd better talk it over with Dixon. I don't know about that. You mean Dixon might be in with the crooks himself? He could be. We can't trust anyone now. The only thing to do is to call the chief of police and let him handle it. They found out Granville's in the basement. They're calling the police. I'll cut in on the line. Hello? I'd like to speak to Chief Landon. Hello? Yes, this is Chief Landon. This is Gene Townley. This is very important. I can't tell you over the phone. But you'd better get up here with a squad of men right away. All right. Police are coming, all right. Let's get going. Oh, no, no. They don't know the story yet. It'll take them 15 or 20 minutes to get here. Dixon. Dixon. How many men you got there? No, no, not the boys. Your own men. Good. Send them up to my office at once. Come on, let's get going.
What's wrong? It's very serious. I've just discovered those boys are working for 39013. What? Yes, we've got to act quickly. I want you to take those boys prisoners so that I can question them before the police get at them. Yes, sir. We'll get them. Now, wait a minute. I'll call them up here. You men get back out of sight. And when they come in, take them. You three get over there. You two over there. I'll get it. Yes? Yes, sir. Right away. Granville wants to see us. You don't suppose he... I don't know. But we better go see. Stay here, Tubbs. What's wrong? You're under arrest. So, it is true. Well, you won't get away with it this time. Climb up and gag him. I'll do the talking. says a word. What's the matter, Tuffy? Jean! Grandfather, what's the matter? Oh, don't be alarmed, my dear. I've just discovered that your three friends are in league with 39013, and I'm taking them into this room for a questioning. I think perhaps you'd better come along, too. Go get him, Tuppy. Don't any one of you move. Get outside. Surround the house. Don't let them escape. Jeff, open that panel. Come on, Malcolm. I'll take this. See if you can find any more trick doors. There's a steel door down here. See if you can find the control switch. Crow! Crow! Here's a switch. Go ahead, try it. That's it. Come on down. Look at that poison gas. Is there a key to that lock? I never seen one. Now look at that drawer. Nothing here. Hey, maybe I can pick it. Got it. The door! 
There's a steel door down here. See if you can find the control switch. Here's a switch. Go ahead, try it. That's it. Come on down. Look at that poison gas. Was there a key to that lock? I never seen one. Now look in that drawer. Nothing here. Hey, maybe I can pick it. suffered no ill effects. He'll be all right now. Thank you, Doctor. Get the doctor's hat. Yes. Good day, Miss Granville. Gentlemen. Good day, Doctor. When more men get here, we'll make a thorough search of the house. Meanwhile, there are some questions I'd like to ask you. The building is surrounded. They're bound to find these secret passages sooner or later. That's what worries me. Yes, but it'll take them a little time. In the meanwhile, come with me. It'll be dark pretty soon. Then Harry Crowell, alias 39013, was motivated mostly by revenge. Yes. By means of promising them large portions of my fortune, he managed to bribe Stanley and Dr. Malcolm to join him in his plan for revenge, which was simply this, to bring me to this house, keep me in this cell while he came to live here himself impersonating me and to destroy all the enterprises that I'd taken my whole life in building up. How terrible. When did you boys become interested in 39 or 13? When he cost my kid brother his life. We were at the amusement pier going through our regular routine. Thanks to Blanche, 
fix them, put us to work. Which was a happy move for all of us. It certainly was. But tell me, how did you keep him from destroying the Channel Tunnel? Well, that was more luck than anything else. We were making a final inspection of the tunnel before the official opening, when I happened to hear an unusual sound. Cut her off until they start into the tunnel. Okay, shut her off. What's the matter? I just heard a strange noise. It seemed to come from overhead. Something suspicious? I don't know. Stop suddenly. Well, I guess it couldn't have mounted too much. I'm rounding up all the men. You better get out of here now. The ceremony's due to start. Yes, sir. I'm going to use your phone, Al. I wouldn't use that phone if I were you. You're not me. Hello, hello. This phone is dead. Well, wait a minute. What's your hurry? Look, I was supposed to take orders from you, but from now on, I'm doing my own thinking. There's something wrong back in that tunnel, and I'm going to find out what it is. Call the guards! This man is going to try and wreck the tunnel! Oh! oh. Hey, what's the idea?
very clever plot and could well have ended disastrously for all concerned. Especially as it turned out, some of Dixon's own men were in the pay of 39013. One thing more, however, still remains a mystery. The identity of the Red Circle. Yes. Who was it that kept sending us those friendly warnings, often in time to save our lives? I can answer that. I sent them. You? Yes. Shortly after you daredevils came to work here, I went to see Grandfather, and there was no one in the audience room. Father, but I... Why, you're not my grandfather. Come on. You're rather an inquisitive young lady, aren't you? Come here. You're right, Miss Granville, I'm not your grandfather. Father's ex partner, the man he sent to prison, 39013. And if you tell anyone that I am not your grandfather, it will automatically cost him his life. Where is he? What have you done with him? I'll take you to him, my dear. Blindfold him. in a car and we drove for possibly an hour until we reached the place where he told me my grandfather was being held prisoner. But wasn't Mr. Granville in this house all the time? Yes, I know that now. The drive was a trick to make me believe grandfather was many miles from here. When the car finally stopped, I was led, still blindfolded, into a house. I know now it was this house. We went through a passage and down a steep flight of stairs. You a visitor. Blanche. Grandfather. What have they done to you? Crowl, if you brought her here to harm her, I... you needn't be alarmed, my friend. She's safe enough. Now your life depends upon her. Perhaps I'd better explain more fully. If I am arrested, and this container cannot be filled, and it must be filled ever so often, or else those lethal gas capsules will fall and break on the floor. And your grandfather would die before anyone could find him. Do you understand? He'd die. Later, he blindfolded me again and brought me back here. So you see how difficult it was for me, knowing all along that 39013 was impersonating my grandfather, and yet, not being able to tell anyone. I knew I had to help and realized I must do so in such a manner that even 39013 wouldn't suspect it was I. That's how I came to use your own symbol and became the mysterious Red Circle. Thanks to Snowflake and Tuffy, I was able to deliver messages at times when I would otherwise have been detected. Well, I certainly have to hand it to you. You did a swell job. By the way, while you were getting this information, which you gave us as our mysterious friend, the Red Circle, did you ever notice anything that looked like the opening to a secret passage? Why, yes. One night, I...
wasn't Mr. Granville in this house all the time? Yes, I know that now. The drive was a trick to make me believe Grandfather was many miles from here. When the car finally stopped, I was led, still blindfolded, into a house. I know now it was this house. We went through a passage and down a steep flight of stairs. I brought you a visitor. Blanche. Grandfather. What have they done to you? Crowell, if you brought her here to harm her, I'll... You needn't be alarmed, my friend. She's safe enough. Now your life depends upon her. Later, he blindfolded me again and brought me back here. So you see how difficult it was for me, knowing all along that 39013 was impersonating my grandfather and yet not being able to tell anyone. I knew I had to help and realized I must do so in such a manner that even 39013 wouldn't suspect it was I. That's how I came to use your own symbol and became the mysterious red circle. Well, I certainly have to hand it to you. You did a swell job. By the way, while you were getting this information, which you gave us as our mysterious friend, the red circle, did you ever notice anything that looked like the opening to a secret passage? Why, yes. One night, I... <laughs> Blanche! Blanche, where are you? Blanche! What's happened to her? The doors and windows are all closed. Let's get outside. Wait. Hello? This is 39013. It's 39013. Blanche is my prisoner. Call in the detectives that surround the house. And if any of you leave that room or communicate with the outside, she will die instantly. I mean exactly what I say. Hello. Hello. It's a bluff. He's trying to hold us here until he can make a getaway. No, 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 no. Wait. I know how really vicious Crowell is. He'll kill her if we don't obey him. But he'll make a clean getaway. Well, better that than kill her. That's right. We better do what he says. Call in your men. Simpson, come in the house. Bring the others with you. safe in my office. Okay. We'll take the sedan. The only car that can overtake us is Blanche's roadster. You'll find a bomb in the closet in my room. Hook it up to the speedometer of our car so that when that indicator reaches 70 miles an hour, it'll explode. Right.
house is probably a maze of passages. By the time we find our way through them, 39 on 13, we'll have escaped. Bert, let's get outside. Come on, get going. They're making your getaway. Get outside. We'll take the chief's car. Car we can use? Yes, my roadster. Come on. shots. He only has two left. I'm going to cut across.
I give up. Gene! Gene! Here we are, Tiny. All right, back to the car. Did you see Crowell and Malcolm? Yeah, we left them on the ground up there. No, we didn't see anybody. Well, we knocked them off. Come on. twisted brain could have fashioned anything so devilishly perfect as this mask. And so we close the lid on this grim memento of Kraus' power. A power which, if it hadn't been for the bravery, intelligence, and daring of you three boys... We deserve no thanks, sir. We were only following our own desire in tracking down 39013. Where will you go when you leave here? The Great East-West Circus has signed us for the season. looking for the button that closes this door. And I found it, too. It's right here. <laughs> uh, somebody help me. Somebody help me get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> 